My name is Stephen Sedley. From 1992 until I retired into academic life in 2011, I was a judge first of the High Court and then of the Court of Appeal for England and Wales. <clears throat> in those capacities, I had frequently to deal with asylum cases, not as a primary decision maker, but in order to ensure that the primary decisions, whether in favour of or against the asylum seeker, had been lawfully taken. <coughs> Invariably in these cases, one party was the state in the person of the Home Secretary. Sometimes it was her own official's refusal of asylum that she was defending. Sometimes she was seeking either to defend or to overturn the decision of, a, of an immigration judge on an appeal from a decision of one of her officials. But in all these instances, one principle predominated, that the state, in the person of a minister, stood before the court on a footing of equality, both procedural and substantive, with the asylum seeker. This has for centuries been one of the cornerstones of judicial independence in the United Kingdom. But it is not invulnerable, because ministers, as well as being answerable ex officio to the courts, exercise a largely unchallenged control over the business of Parliament. Using this, the Home Office has for many years had access to a fast track to change the law when the legal system fails to deliver the results that it wants. One of the most deplorable instances of this occurred in 2004, when a new Act of Parliament, piloted by a Labour Home Secretary, sought to dictate to immigration judges what facts they were to find proved in certain situations. The credibility of an applicant was to be treated as damaged, for example, in recounting torture or abuse to which they had been subjected, if they had entered the United Kingdom using false papers. Since there's frequently no other way of escaping from a repressive regime, the apparent effect of the provision was to exclude many of the most genuine claimants. Well, I'm relieved to say that the principle of judicial independence survived this attack. When the legislation finally came before the Court of Appeal, the word potentially was read into the phrase damaging the claimant's credibility, leaving the independence of the first instance adjudicator intact. But the episode is not unique, and governments continue to resent judicial decisions which they cannot control. In this situation, and in a world in which forced migration has reached epidemic proportions, the rule of law and its requirement of unimpeded access to a competent, honest and independent judiciary is more important than ever. <clears throat>